I heard that he actually like stabbed my mother in the leg with the screwdriver and he threatened to put me in a microwave um, if she had ever left him. My name is Angel Condillo. Uh, I'm 20 years old. I am currently single and I live in the city of Paramount, California. For a living, I work at Little Caesars part-time uh, with the title of assistant manager. Well, I was born in San Jose, Northern California. And uh, growing up, I moved from Modesto to Fresno to San Jose to San Jose to Paramount, California, from Paramount to LA, and then back to Paramount. So I touched a lot of bases and it touched a lot of lands here in California. Um, but growing up, for the most part, was here in Paramount. Um, about a year and a half ago, I did live in LA, but we did get evicted, and since then, uh, the Lord's really just been having his hand over us. I have seven siblings. I am the oldest. I have six sisters in the middle, and it ends with a little brother. Home life growing up was, it was good and safe, but at the same time, honestly, being honest, it was uneasy. Um, my mom didn't really have a firm foundation on where to have all of us. We went from house to house, shelter to shelter. Um, when I did live in uh, San Jose, we were going to be transferred to a shelter in Oakland, California. And when that news reached my grandfather's ears, he said no. And he demanded that my mother and us move down to Paramount to live with him. It wasn't so much the burden on my shoulders, and I was a little blind to it, uh, but thinking about it, you know, older, it probably was really heavy for my mother. Um, Growing up, it was just all my little sisters going to school, taking the school bus to school, coming back, going to my aunt's apartment, uh, my aunt's apartment, not even our own, where probably 15 people lived in a one, two bedroom apartment. Um, which is rough, uneasy, you know, like I said, going from house to house, not our own. As a child, maybe from the ages of five to seven, I was very family oriented and I still am today but it was very like my sisters and, you know, hills and flowers and stuff and the spring breeze. Um, but after that, I began to be more independent. Um, I began to focus more uh, on myself and like school. And I remember one time um, in high school when I was on the, the swim team, I didn't mean to hurt my mom's feelings and I believe she was drunk, but I told her like, I'd rather even, I'd rather be at school or in the pool than to hear you yelling at me and she's like really you know like, yeah like honestly like I don't want to be with be around all this and thinking back like I don't think it was very hurtful but you know with my mother in addiction it probably was very hurtful. My mother was actually um, in chains of drug abuse to methamphetamine. When I found out I was rather upset because I knew that I didn't have a father in my life and hearing the stories about my mother and that relationship that she had he had actually being in drugs and being in, my mother being in domestic violence with my own father, uh, I heard that he actually like stabbed my mother in the leg with the screwdriver and he threatened to put me in a microwave um, if she had ever left him. Uh, so just like, to so think about like my mom had to do and go through all of that, even with other men in the future that she didn't even know, uh, would put her in the same predicament. But um, I found that at 13, 14 that my mother was using drugs and that kind of pushed me to be a little rebellious and act up in school. My life before I got saved was, well, I, I used to identify as bisexual. I claimed I was bisexual and I was in a homosexual relationship. Um, in high school, I was really exploring and acting on those feelings, acting on those tendencies. Um, I knew of God, but I didn't know God. Uh, I claimed to know God and as Many people say your actions really prove otherwise, your faith would prove otherwise. And even though I claimed to know God, I had no faith. I wasn't active or consistent. Um, so I was living a life of LGBT community, really progressing for that, progressing for a lot of other things. Um, and if I could just, it's very hard to explain, but if I can get the brain that I used to have and the brain that I have now and compare them, they would almost be so distinct that it, would, it could either be so distinct from either black and white, big or small, red or blue. Like that's just how much life today is so changed because of God than who it used to be. 
how I used to be. Uh, but it was before being saved and growing up, I feel like I just didn't want to deal with anything. I didn't want to deal with the responsibility of having to step in like my sister Emily had to step in because of my mother being on drugs. Uh, that really clouded her her responsibility. It clouded her uh, dependability. I knew I could always run to my mom and I always felt love for my mom, but it was just, I felt more safe in the safe zone, so to speak, to put up a wall and just be independent, just to focus on myself and just worry about me. And I think that just led to a lot of ignorance and selfishness and bitterness that really carried on and began to really enveloped me moments and months before I actually accepted Christ into my life. A lot of anxiety really kind of like ravaged my mind, ravaged my body. Uh, I remember just because of who I thought I used to be, which was bisexual, you know, really trying to explore that idea, trying to figure out, is this really me or not? Uh, just what the whole aspect was or just you know, trying to get answers from other people rather than the Word of God, which I know today. Uh, just because of that, I was just too afraid to even begin ninth grade. So when I went into ninth grade, uh, I just chose to do online study. But during that time, for me, just being secluded to myself from just, you know, with my, my thoughts, my feelings just by myself, neglecting the real world and just trying to feel like my own world, uh, just a lot of anxiety built up and I didn't even know it until one day like I just tried to cross the street and just anxiety just ravaged myself like I couldn't even cross the street I couldn't even press the like the crosswalk button I was just going to the store to get like a soda and I couldn't even hold a conversation with the, the guy at the register um, it was just so weird but today like I have none of that like I can talk and talk and talk and be so just open with people and I never had that so the Lord really just opened up my eyes, opened up my heart, and allowed me to be brave. In middle school, after the passing of my cousin, uh, his name was Sammy. When Sammy passed away, it was 2013, I was in middle school, and again, these, this identity issue arose in my life. I wasn't like any other, any other guy my age. Everybody was in little relationships, holding hands and stuff. I never had that. I, didn't, I just didn't know how to go about that. I didn't know what to do. Um, but depression really came over me and it was very selfish of me if I think back because after Sammy had passed away, this issue bothered me so much that I was just willing and ready, like on the verge of just taking my own life because I, I remember actually now that I believed this one lie that I was the only person out of all creation, all of God's people, I was just the only one out of the billions and billions of billions of people that ever lived. I was that one mistake that I was too far out that I was just overlooked for some reason by God and that was it. So that really probably pushed me to the edge where I, I didn't care if I committed suicide right after the death of my cousin which shook the whole family. Like I didn't care if I was next. I remember that. When I first heard about Jesus. I heard of him and I didn't know him. It was when I was living in San Jose with my aunt in her apartment, 15 of us living in a two bedroom apartment. She was attending church and I saw people, you know, being prayed over. I saw people praying, I saw people worshiping. I attended Sunday school and stuff. I thought it was just whatever. I wasn't really focused on that. But when I really sought the Lord for myself, it was my friend Caitlin. She shared uh, prayer requests for Instagram. And uh, it was after the passing of my, my aunt, uh, my Auntie Boo Boo, we call her Auntie Boo Boo, which is actually the mother of Sammy. So when she passed away, it just, everything kind of like bent from like an outward, ex uh, outward perspective to like an inside one. And it shifted my eyes to just look at me and my standing with God. So through Caitlin's prayer request and everything that was going on with the family with the passing of my aunt. I just messaged her, asked her to pray for me. I, asked, I just wanted answers about you know, the whole identity issue of bisexuality, homosexuality. And 
I got answers. I came to the place shop with Paramount and I received salvation. So I remember it was Wednesday, May 1st, 2019. Uh, it was Diga speaking and I remember Caitlin telling me like, Diga's a really good speaker, you're gonna love it. And it's so weird that it falls on a Wednesday that you're coming. And uh, so I came, I was greeted. I didn't feel any kind of like weird like judgment because I knew that I carried my my old identity, the world identity that I used to carry with me, that I thought was me. I wore it on my sleeves, like I do my emotions, and I'm just out there. Um, but there was there was just like, when I walked in the building, there was just like a love and, a, and just like a, a grace and a peace that I've never felt in any other church. Um, so from then, everything just went forward. I, re, I was a little, uh, what's the word, scared. <laughs> scared to go up when, uh, when they were asking if, if you did know the Lord or if you wanted to rededicate your life to the Lord. Um, I was scared to go up. And even though I was sitting in the front row, I was encouraged to go up. And I did uh, say the prayer of salvation and receive Christ into my life. And I, I remember I really meant it. <laughs> Jesus changed my life so much. But I know that's really like cliche. But if it's one thing that I just talk about a lot today is that I used to live a life of homosexuality and I used to do a lot of things. And now I know the wisdom and difference of my sinful life and God opening up my eyes to who I used to be and who I am today. And knowing him today and him showing me his heart, showing me his love, showing me his goodness, his grace and the people and things that he's placed into my life. Um, the truth that he's given me, the just the love, really the love of God. That's true. In today's culture, it's almost unheard of. Everybody is really advocating for to leave everybody alone, let people do what they want to do. And I kind of fell into that kind of like that wave, I guess. Um, even though it's unheard of, it's possible. Because in the Bible it talks about the old has passed and the new is here. And if you accept Christ into your heart, you are a new creation. Um, you are a new man. And I really believe that because a lot of the things that go in my mind and the desires of my heart have changed. And they are in route and actually like, they stand on biblical ground and truth of what my new heart's desires are, which is to have a wife and a family and a future with the Lord in there. As bumpy was as the road was, uh, and as crazy and topsy-turvy things were, I have been delivered from anxiety, from worry, from, from anxiousness, uh, from depression, from homosexuality, uh, some illnesses, and uh, I just had my sight set on the Lord. And He can do that for others. He really can. I really believe that.